just briefly talk about uh, kind of an introduction to ATP creation. And um, I think pretty much we're just going to do essentially one slide. I'm going to put this all up there. And pause it. Whoops. Just pause it here. And then you can go ahead and write all that. Go ahead. I'm going to add something else to it too right now. And that is yeah, chemical equation. that I make freshmen memorize, so you should all know it. Cell respiration is called respiration because it involves taking in oxygen and producing carbon dioxide. It's also called internal respiration. External respiration is breathing commonly known as breathing, okay? So internal respiration is taking the food you eat, and essentially we're going to use the carbohydrate glucose, and step by step, use oxygen to break it down. Remember that the energy is in the bonds between atoms, bonds are electrons being shared, and as the glucose is broken down, it's producing carbon dioxide and water. Now, I'm going to go to the next slide, which is kind of a diagram. I don't know that you have it in your textbook, but it doesn't really matter, because you're not going to have to regurgitate it at all. But well, I just want to show you a couple of things here about this and talk about it. Okay? There's actually three parts to cell respiration, none of which you're going to have to know right now, except I want you to understand how complicated it is. Okay? And get this out of the way a second. So, in this whole thing, the yellow is a cell, okay, and so glucose gets into your cell, and you die, we'll talk about this later with digestion and insulin and how that's all interrelated, okay, but glucose gets into your cell, and it's broken down. Now, glucose is C6H12O6, that's a molecule of glucose. Okay, it's got six atoms of carbon. I'm just going to draw this on here. Glucose is generally in some kind of ring structure, like this. Okay, what do those lines represent? Chemical bonds, covalent bonds. Okay, so with H's attached and O's attached to those and so on. So those represent chemical or covalent bonds. Okay, and so then as... Those covalent bonds are broken slowly. It takes time. The first thing is glucose is converted to something called pyruvate. Then it passes into the powerhouse of the cell from sixth grade cell model building. Okay. The mitochondrion, where notice what it says here. It says electrons are carried. And electrons are carried. Because when you break the chemical bond, when you break it, What's actually in a chemical bond is what's actually the bond made of. Covalent bonds, not protons, in a covalent bond, what are shared? Electrons are shared. So these are sharing electrons, and when you break it apart, some of those electrons are going to be used. And when those electrons are used or carried, that is equal to energy. Okay, even though we can't really see energy or feel energy, or we can, well, I guess we can see energy and feel energy, but we can't really see it. It's not definable. We say that these electrons have a lot of energy when we peel them out of the glucose, as we break it apart. Okay, when we broke, when I did my magic trick and broke the paper apart last time, it gave off energy as heat and light. Yeah. So the idea is then that you break apart a molecule, use the electrons as your energy source, and then bring them somewhere to make ATP. Kind of like you do some work and somebody pays you with a check. 
What do you have to do with the check? You use it. Cash it. So you have to bring it somewhere, cash it, and now you can use it. Same concept, general. Okay? We're going to stop there for now because tomorrow then we'll uh, kind of detail out what happens, or not all this detail, but we're going to actually talk about how ATP is made specifically. And then uh, talk about how much ATP you actually get, how much your muscles use, and all that. We're going to relate it directly to muscles. Okay?